y'all, it's Marvie for the Real Housewives of Potomac, episode two. This week's episode is a super size one they add on the extra 15 minutes. So let's get into it. So we open with Ashley, um, and she's meeting up with her mom, Sheila. Oh, Sheila. Oh, oh, Sheila. <laughs> I mean, there's just something so endearing about Miss Sheila, yet scammy. Think Sheree at like 62. And it's no shade. I just feel like Miss Sheila back in her day was trying to get to the bag just like her daughter is today. So they're looking for flowers for Ashley's upcoming housewarming party she invited all the ladies to. Well, not all the ladies. All the ladies except Candace. Side note, I'm looking at Ashley's confessional and ooh, whoever her makeup artist is, they got her face beat. I think it's Makeup Machine. He follows me. I think he um, watches my reviews. Shout out to him. Um, and also the boob job. It, it looks good too. Like, look, Ashley might not be divorced yet, but she's out in these streets dipping and zooming it. So Ashley's just going over with her mom who's going to the party and who's not. So first we find out that the new girl NECA is friends with Ashley. So that's where we're going to be introduced to her. Um, she's Nigerian just like Wendy. And we get a little flashback between her and Ashley saying that she knows Wendy already. Well, seen her in passing. We think a little background about her, like she's a newlywed with her husband. She just moved to Potomac. Sheila then asked Ashley, is Michael going? And she says no, but they just came back from the Bahamas together. And there was no sex between them, but they were very cordial. So then Sheila asks, well, what about Michael and Candace? Isn't he suing her? And yes, Michael Darby is still suing Candace. He filed a lawsuit for $2 million over sex claim on show and accuses her of defamation. Now, this article is from March of this year. I'm sure it's still ongoing. And I feel like Michael Darby's just trying to stick it back to Candace, even though he might not have a case. He wants her to spend money on a lawyer. And I feel like he has the coin to play in court with her. Ashley says she knows nothing about the lawsuit. She's not connected to it. But I'm pretty sure Candace is going to take this lawsuit out on Ashley, which is the reason why she didn't invite her to her housewarming. Now, does anyone else in the chat besides me see the glee on Ashley's face as she's talking about Candace being dragged to court? So next scene, we're with Mia as she's meeting up with Karen to talk out their differences. Karen shows up looking like an X-Men in this rogue wig she got on. Now, if y'all forgot the beef between Karen and Mia, it was last season, I think at... Whose party was this? I think it was Candace's um, album release party or something. And Mia came up to Karen saying she heard this rumor about her getting on with somebody that wasn't Ray in the bathroom. Also, when Karen sees Mia, she greets her with a handshake, not a hug. Now, even if this rumor was true, no one's going to believe it coming from Mia because she's just not credible. We cut to Karen's confessional and she said she felt really backstabbed by Mia because she always had her back. And production rolls the footage, Karen has had her back in the past, but Mia's a wild card. I don't think she really has any alliances and I think that's why production decides to keep her. So they're going back and forth now and Mia's defending herself by saying that she just repeated a rumor. She heard it, she didn't believe it. And then Karen is like, well, you disrespected me. She's talking about girl code amongst married women <laughs> that, you know, you really disrespected my husband in that moment. Child, this wig Karen has on is just so distracting. It keeps pulling me out of the scene. So Karen's a crafty one. I see what you're doing. So right after she told Mia off, she's now just checking in on G, like what's going on? Karen don't care. She just wants some tea on Mia so she can go back to the other group and let them know. So Karen then brings up what Giselle said in the reunion about G possibly embezzling funds. And Karen's like, well, well that's not true, is it? Mia's like, oh, it's not true, but you know, at first I believed it. Why are you saying that on camera? If y'all are paying attention to this scene, Karen is showing us how easy it is to manipulate Mia. Mia's saying she doesn't drink anymore, but she drinks wine. <sighs> Alex was right at BravoCon to ask Mia that question. Will she have her timeline straight this season? And I don't believe so. So now Mia wants us to believe that last season when they went to Miami that she was mixing meds and drinks. So that affected her mood when she decided to throw a drink at Wendy. Do y'all believe that? Hands, hands in the chat. She tells that to Karen and Karen says, you know, I appreciate you telling me this and maybe that her and Wendy can get together and talk. We cut to Karen's confession and she says, ever since Mia broke her trust, she might never get it back. And she brings up Giselle as an example. 
They then end this conversation with a handshake and not a hug and go their separate ways. Next scene, we're with Candace at her house. She's inviting her manager over to discuss business in her pedestrian looking office. Here we go with the gay minion trope, of course. And he looks very nervous to be on camera, like he's sweating. So they're talking about her tour, of course, because you know she's the first lady of City Winery. Her manager says that when she goes to Chicago, like she has some opening acts in other cities, he's thinking, why don't you add Drew from Real Housewives of Atlanta? And Candace's face, you would have thought she said Countess Luann or something. Like, I don't really care for Drew, but I mean, she can sing and she can sing better than Candace. So I don't know why Candace is being shady. Her reasoning is she doesn't need to do anything musically with Drew because she doesn't need Drew to draw a crowd. That's her excuse, but I call bullshit because she probably don't want to be out saying by Drew. But hey, that's y'all girl. I'm sure y'all gonna have a bunch of excuses down in the comments. But I think that's rich coming from Candace, who's probably still in debt trying to promote this album of hers with this mediocre music. Like she really did think that she was gonna get a Grammy nomination with that song with Trina from last season. Okay, girl. Like, I think she told Chris in the last episode that she didn't really make money from touring because she has to pay everybody back for promoting this album. Like, from her dancers to her glam team to studio time. I'm pretty sure she had to pay Trina for that feature, too. So she's probably on tour selling tickets, but that money she gets, she's paying people back. I'm just tired of her trying to shut this music career down our throats. I love to see her motherhood journey or maybe do something else with that master's degree she just got. So next scene when we're Robin and Juan again, and in this scene, she's telling him the conversation that she had with the other ladies. She called it an intervention, which, you know, I thought it was, but it just really sucks that she didn't really take that information in and she didn't see it as Giselle and them like really being concerned for her. Like, she just saw it as them being messy and gossiping. She will never hold this man accountable, and if she says she don't care, then so be it. So Robin tells him what Giselle said about the optics of him being at the laundromat with another woman. Juan is like, I don't care. Why should he? Because Robin don't. So then we see the article say Juan Dixon was in a nail salon with the woman he worked with at CSU. He has since been fired, so there are no longer co-workers. So they shouldn't even be hanging out together. But at the nail salon, Juan was getting his nails done. She wasn't. So they were out for leisure together. Robin is lost. I think production had it right in the last episode. She is in the upside down. They're actually making light of the situation. And he's like, go ahead, Robin, be mad at me, be mad at me. And then production's in on it too. They have a Robin's mad meter. The most I've seen Robin mad was when she confronted Ashley in her own restaurant about to beat her ass. Look, if they want a sibling type relationship while they fuck other people, let them. Oh, this is such a staged scene between the two of them. Now she's asking about his job again. So I'm guessing the lawsuit that Juan's in is still ongoing. And then we cut to Robin's confessional where she's like, knowing what I know, he did nothing wrong and everything right. Of course he did, Robin. Like y'all marriage, he did everything right. I just want better for Robin. But if she don't care, why should we? Ooh, and did y'all catch that part? Juan said, I normally put people before me. And then Robin's like, as do I. Exactly, Robin. Right. So next scene, we're introduced to the new housewife, Ineka. I'm going to try not to call her Neka because it's really easy to do that. But yeah, we're getting a background on Ineka, and she just moved to Potomac, the proper Potomac area code. Uh, it's a five-bedroom, five-bath. I'm surprised it didn't list the price. Wow, and not only does she have a home, she has more than four homes. It looks like maybe eight. Okay, so her husband's a doctor. She's married to medicine as well. Um, she's a lawyer. I mean, they're both Nigerian. Are we surprised? And that's a good stereotype, by the way. Nigerian people in the room, isn't it either doctor or lawyer? So it looks like Ineka wants to be a mom and we see her journey trying to get pregnant. I'm pretty sure by the time this season ends, she'll be pregnant, maybe by the reunion. Now, wait a minute, Ineka. Bubbles in the morning and night? I don't know about that. Like, soon as I wake up? Maybe twice a week, but not every day. So next scene, we're with Wendy as she's meeting up with her producer. I gotta say, Wendy, I think, has the best style on Potomac. And even at BravoCon, like, she was looking good. So the property they're at right now, they're looking to rent it out for studio space because 
Wendy Wants a Podcast or some type of show. I mean, here we go again, another season of Wendy trying to find a different career path. I mean, last season she wanted to own a restaurant. This season she wants a podcast. Now, I'm assuming podcast because she said talk show. And I'm like, well, does she know how difficult it is to keep a talk show up and running? So the type of show she's describing, she kind of describing Polly Side Eye. Well, Wendy, that idea is taken. This is my tiny problem with Wendy. Like I like her for the show, but mostly with the other ladies in a group setting, like to provide input. Her by herself, I'm a little bored. I'm sorry. Now what you're doing comes off as a harebrained scheme when you don't know what a PA is, you don't know your budget, and you don't even have the title for your show yet. Yeah, Wendy, go back to the drawing board. I mean, yeah, I can see a podcast for her, but I want her to like figure out the niche and the title before she start renting studio space. So next scene with a few of the ladies, uh, Karen organized a Pilates activity and it's her, Mia, Ashley, and Giselle, I believe. So then we cut to Ashley's confessional and she's introducing us to her new titties, Demi and Diamond. So Karen's giving her reason for doing Pilates. She's reaching the triple 20s, which is her way of saying she's turning 60. She's being very dramatic with the lady, saying she went to a cardiologist and she found out she has 5% of blockage in her heart, I believe. It looks like she's trying to make a moment out of it, but the other lady's just staring at her like, okay, uh, is that why we're here? Karen corrects us and says it's not a blockage, it's a deposit. Okay, so now production just playing with us. They're giving the screen a VHS filter. They're playing 80s music while they're doing Pilates. Fast forward. So a little later, Mia leaves the room for a bit and Giselle takes this opportunity to ask Karen, is she good with Mia? Karen maintains that her trust is to be earned by Mia and as Mia comes back, she lets her know that again. So then Giselle lets Karen know about the intervention she had with Robin and how she's under a firestorm right now, you know, with her relationship with Juan. And she says, well, don't you think you owe Robin an apology? And Karen's like, for what? <laughs> and I'm guessing for the Georgetown girl that allegedly looked like her. And you know, that kind of makes Karen out to be a hypocrite a bit because she got mad when Mia said rumors about her but she's doing the same thing about Robin. Now she acknowledges that, but she said in this case, she actually believes there's some truth to it. But then Karen says that Robin owes her an apology too, so I'm guessing she won't give an apology until Robin gives her one first. Ugh, and here we go. The conversation's on Ashley now, asking, are you divorced? No, of course not. Ashley's main defense to this is, well, my name's on the deed, my name's on the deed. Well, if he stops paying that mortgage, then you're gonna get evicted. Now, of course, the ladies asked Ashley about Michael suing Candace. She said she knows nothing about it. And speaking of Candace, Karen asked the other ladies, what do they think about her? Giselle says, I don't even know what y'all talking about. <laughs> we move on to Ashley, and of course, they're not in a good place either. The group points out how they always go at it, and they really do. Like, they go back and forth. Candace usually gets the most licks in because she just goes solo. But Ashley tells the ladies that Candace told her never to speak to her again after the reunion. She then reads a long text sent to her by Candace telling her how messy she is. And there's some fact in that, but she's definitely not inviting her to her housewarming. So again, we don't have the full cast together yet. So now we get to the topic of Giselle's business for once and who she's dating. This man that's 17 years her junior and he's on Summer House. Never heard of him. Mia's like, I wouldn't even know what to do with that. Giselle says, I do. <laughs> I hear that. And of course we cut to Karen giving her shade about the age difference, saying that Giselle was in high school when he was in Pampers. I'm just hoping this season Giselle got some business of her own to tend to. So next scene is the day of Ashley's housewarming. We see her getting things ready. We see that Uncle Lump will be at this party. And if you don't know who Uncle Lump is, that is Ashley's uncle who always reads her for making the wrong decisions when it comes to Michael. So Giselle arrives first and I don't like what she's wearing, but what else is new? I gotta hand it to Giselle. She is quite the producer. She hasn't been at this party for five minutes and she brought up Michael. And in front of Ashley's uncle who she knows don't care for Michael. And it turns out her uncle didn't know that she went to the Bahamas with Michael. Ashley basically saying in her confessional that her uncle is out of touch and she gonna do what she wanna do. So then Karen arrives and she looks amazing in this lavender. It's just the wig that's throwing me off. Burn it. So Mia arrives and 
Did she try to shade Ashley's house? Like, where's the water? I mean, at least she didn't shade the sides. I think on the first watch, I was like, no, Mia is not who just, you know, downsized her home and trying to talk about the size of somebody else's. But she was just talking about the fact that Ashley calls it a beach house and it's not near any water. We see Karen still giving Mia handshakes because she's a liar and is not to be trusted. Wow, so Sharice comes in and she is dressed like Karen once again. And of course this messy group points it out. From the looks of it, Karen still despises Sharice. So as Ashley's giving the ladies a tour of her home, Wendy shows up and she hugs everybody except Giselle and Mia. Just completely paid them dust. And I don't blame her. If I'm not fucking with somebody, you do not exist. I mean, Giselle even stepped to the side when Wendy came to hug um, Karen. I don't even think it phased Giselle, but it looked like Mia was bothered by it. Oh my God, and we have a surprise guest. We have Sesame Street. Yes, Deborah is back. And the look on Wendy's face. Ashley is just as messy as she always has been since season one. She knew exactly what she was doing, inviting Deborah there. So as ladies are all seated, I completely forgot about Robin, but she arrives late, of course. And this is also the first time she's seen Giselle since the intervention. And I'm sure the first time she's seen Karen and Wendy since the reunion. But Robin looks like she knows what she's walking into, so I'm sure Karen's gonna bring it up at some point. Not this episode, but maybe the next one. So what I will give Robin is she at least spoke to Karen and Wendy when she sat at the table. She didn't like blatantly ignore them. So last but not least, we see Aneka arrive and this is her first time meeting the other ladies. So Ashley already tells Aneka and Wendy that they have in common that they're both evil. Um, they high five each other and then Wendy actually corrects them on how to pronounce her name. So it is Ineka. It's not Neka, like naked. We then cut to a few of the other ladies' confessionals, and it's a good first impression from everybody. I like her too. Uh-oh, so Ashley wants to talk to Wendy on the side for a bit. So Wendy and Ashley are talking, and Wendy is showering her with compliments and saying she's proud of her. And I really think she got closer to Ashley when last season, she was like one of the only ones to stick up for her when Mia threw that drink at her. Having said that though, Wendy does acknowledge that Ashley can be very messy. For example, her bringing her friend around saying that Eddie was flirting with her, calling him Happy Eddie. Wendy tells her that, I just wanna know that I can trust you and you're not gonna stab me in the back. Well, Wendy, I advise you not to leave your guard down. With that said, Ashley feels the need to tell Wendy what her own friend Ineka told her. And it looked like she was kind of baiting Ineka to talk about Wendy saying that, you know, she has a PhD. Well, is she a doctor? We already see mischievous Ashley planting the seeds. And I didn't really like this because Ashley, like I know she's messy and that's what she does. Like she would do it with anybody on the cast, but it's the optics, Ashley. You know they gonna say that you're pitting the two Nigerian girls against each other, this light-skinned girl. So look, it is what it is. Like, that's what the optics are. Y'all should be more mindful. Weren't y'all just telling Robin to be aware of the optics? It looks like you need to as well. Now, why is Ashley bringing up this subject matter about Wendy's Nigerian family being cursed and shunned? Like, you don't know anything about that. And you can't even defend Ashley on this because she caught to it on Watch What Happens Live that she started this beef between Wendy and Ineka. We cut to Ashley's confessional and she's laughing about it. Uh, well, that's how I remember. And eh, wrong answer, forehead. Then she want to blame the alcohol. Girl, ooh, I hope they get you at the reunion. Well, unfortunately, we see the seed has been sown already. And now the two Nigerians will be going at it at some point because Wendy definitely feels some type of way hearing this from Ashley. And that is where the episode ends, y'all. Messy ass Ashley. I mean, I'm still waiting on the whole group to get together and add Candace to the mix. Good episode, but I already see the comments and what people are gonna say about Ashley, and we're probably gonna be headed for another dark season. Hopefully not. But yeah, uh, y'all let me know what y'all thought of the episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all for Married in Medicine. Bye.